Trigonometry. Trigonometric functions of sine, cos and tan. Sine, cos and tan are defined with respect to a right angle triangle. So let's review the right angle triangle. It has three sides, a 90 degree angle opposite the largest side called the hypotenuse and three sides with letters A, B and C. Importantly, each lettered side is opposite the same lettered angle. So A is opposite A, B opposite B, and angle C opposite side C. Sine, cosine and tangent, or sine, cos and tan, as they're more commonly written, are defined as follows. Sine is defined as the opposite over the hypotenuse, cos defined as the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, and tan as the ratio of the opposite side over the adjacent. In each case, when we're saying opposite over hypotenuse, we mean the length of the opposite side over the length of the hypotenuse, or the length of the adjacent over the hypotenuse, or the length of the opposite over the adjacent. It's remembered as SOH for sine opposite hypotenuse for SO, CAH cos adjacent hypotenuse, CA, and tan opposite adjacent, TOA, TOA. So, CA, TOA. So there are the orders in which these are done. And there are other ways of remembering them there. One used in the US and others you might see in a textbook here. But most people will remember So, CA, TOA. Let's see now what these ratios mean and how they're calculated. So let's consider the angle A. The angle A in this triangle is here on the bottom left hand side and the 90 degree here is on its right. Remember that once you have a 90 degree angle, it's a right angle triangle, the hypotenuse will be opposite the 90 degree angle. So we know where the hypotenuse is, but how do we get the opposite and the adjacent? Well, an important step to remember is you look at the angle you're interested in and from that angle you draw an arrow opposite it, away from that angle to the side that's not touching it. This side touches side A, this side touches angle A, both C and B touch the angle A but this side here does not. So this A, this side here, is considered the opposite for angle A. Given that the hypotenuse is always opposite the 90 degree angle. Once we've defined the opposite and the hypotenuse, then the adjacent is the remaining one. So for angle A, this is the opposite, this is the adjacent, and this is the hypotenuse. So considering angle A then, we can see that for angle A, the opposite is A, the adjacent, the one that touches A, is B, and the hypotenuse, always the one opposite, the 90 degree, is C. So sine A would be opposite over hypotenuse, A over C, cos B, adjacent over hypotenuse, B over C, and tan A is opposite over adjacent. We now consider the same triangle, but our focus of attention is now angle B, up here. So do we get the same ratios? Well, let's start again in exactly the same process as before. Once we have an angle of interest, we draw an arrow from it to the side that doesn't touch that angle. B is the only side that doesn't touch the angle B. Side A is adjacent to it and C also touches it. So the angle that's opposite or the side that's opposite the angle B is the side B. The hypotenuse as before is opposite the 90 degree and the adjacent in this case is the one that touches the, ang the side that touches the angle B but that's not the hypotenuse. So for angle B then B is the opposite, A is the adjacent and C is the hypotenuse. So if we calculate the signs of that for sine of B, 
we're looking at the opposite over the hypotenuse, in this case B over C. For cos of B, we're looking at the adjacent to B over the hypotenuse, A over C. And for tan of B, we're looking at the opposite over the adjacent. So the opposite and the adjacent depend on your angle of original focus. The hypotenuse will always be opposite the 90 degree angle.